I can pretty much leave everything as it is for now, but I think we are ready to go. All right, perfect. All right, so the topic for, for this evening is I'm gonna start building a website from scratch. And this is fairly, well, it is kind of un, unscripted, but essentially I'm gonna build a, a site from start to finish. And it's gonna go over multiple nights, okay? It may not be all done this week, but over the next few weeks, I'm gonna be building a site from start to finish. And the whole process of setting up a local site to hopefully um, publishing it somewhere, I'm not quite sure where. I don't really know where this is going. I haven't planned any of it other than what I'm going to build. So to show you what I'm gonna build, um, let me just quickly show you right here. Okay, so here is a bootstrap template. And if I go to, and don't worry, I will put in, I will create a blog post about this and, and there will be show notes about it. But if I go and check out the live preview, here is what it looks like. Now I spent a few hours, but an hour, half an hour, let's just say, um, I don't wanna over exaggerate, uh, looking for a decent theme that can really showcase what Drupal can do, but also to show you what you can achieve by using Layout Builder and other tools in Drupal. Um, so we're not gonna perhaps build absolutely everything in here because this, um, this theme is a uh, example of how to do slideshows, how to create, create these type of cards, how to do these other type of cards. I believe these are cards as well. But then if you go up the top here, you have a services section, uh, you have a contact section with a form, you have four different portfolios that you can do. Just trust me, there's a lot here. Absolutely a ton of stuff you can do. So there's a lot to do here. And we may not build absolutely everything, but we'll see how we go. Um, the blog is pretty good. Go through here. I'll show you how to build all of this in Drupal. Now, I haven't actually built this. I haven't tested any of this out. This is gonna be a um, a process. Uh, yeah, so Darren's saying uninstall. Yeah, uh, Layout Builder has changed. There are some limitations, and I will talk about the limitations of Layout Builder. Um, it's not perfect. No system is. Uh, there are things you just have to work around and there are limitations with it. Um, about two weeks ago, I did a tutorial on using paragraphs and radix, um, where I think it's time now for me to figure out how to do all this using Layout Builder. So, but it's not perfect, but you know, nothing in Drupal is. So I really don't know how this is gonna go, but what what I hope um, for, but, but what I hope for viewers to get out of it is to kind of see the thought process going through of building like things like this. And it's gonna be long, um, but I'll try and cut everything up um, and I'll be able to give you time code so you can jump into in individual sections because most people will be watching this after the fact. And um, yeah, so, so I'll do my best to kind of make notes, show notes after it. So even if you are watching this live or if you are watching this as a recording, you know, a year from now, look in the note, uh, video below, there should be show notes or something. Anyway, let's jump in. So here is, uh, here is, okay, no, we're not building a Drupal 7 site. This is Drupal 8. Drupal 9 is coming out in a month. So uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so this is all Drupal 8, by the way. And so the first thing we're gonna have to do is set up a local environment. Now, there are many ways to set up a local environment. You can use MAMP, you can use WAMP, you can use, I'm not gonna use any more acronyms, um, XAMP, Docker, whatever you want. What I've chosen is Lando. Now, if you Google search Lando, you'll probably get, yeah, not Lando from um, Star Wars. You've got Lando Norris, the Formula One driver, but I'm not talking about him. Um, Lando Dev, here we go. So there is a Docker-based environment called Lando. And, um, me being on a Mac, Docker is notoriously slow. I mean, ridiculously slow, let's be honest. Um, but I've, I've been playing around with this lately and I'm pleasantly surprised how fast it is. Now, I do hope that it can all keep up because I am using a lot of CPU cycles live streaming this, but I hope my MacBook can handle it. And it is a Docker-based environment. And I've already gone ahead and set stuff up. All right, so there's a quick question here about using... Um, can I still use Drupal 8 after 
Drupal 9 release. Um, yes, so Drupal 8 will still be rele- uh, still be maintained for another six months. Now, I will mention, and um, I, will, I will mention this about Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. Drupal 9 is just, is, is essentially Drupal 8 with deprecated code removed. So you should be able to upgrade easily. Should, okay? Air quotes. It should be a simple upgrade. So, yes. That's all I'll say. Research it. Um, yes, as Darren says in the chat, Docker is just half speed on Mac. That is true. Um, I have experienced that myself, but I've been pleasantly surprised with um, with Lando. And the thing is, though, with Docker, it's about your setup. It's about making sure you don't have too many files um, shared and synced. And trust me, I've been this close of buying a Windows machine um, because I still, unfortunately, I just can't use Linux because I, I I need the creative cloud to do video editing and with my videos and things like that. So I can't just use that. And I don't want two machines. Anyway, I'll, be, I'll start off by using Lando, okay? So the first thing we're going to do, I'm not going to install it. I've already gone and installed it. Go check it out. I hope everything works during this live thing. Um, but what I'll first do is I'll open up my terminal and the first thing you'll do is you'll simply download um, download Drupal. So I've got my trusty command here. So what we're going to do is just download Drupal and I'm going to put it in a directory called... Um, oh, no, it's not correct. Um, D8, D8, D8 BS. So that means bootstrap, not the other BS um, build. So we'll give that... Uh, question. Uh, sorry. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, somebody's asking. Can they ask a question? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. This is a live stream. It's all. It's all a relaxed environment. And yeah, it's best to ask questions when composers running because composers very slow. That's no, not. It's not that slow. That's unfair. All right. Let's just give that a second. So hopefully that will download pretty quick. I hope my internet's not um, going slow because the internet in Australia is notoriously not the greatest. My, my, my internet's not that bad. I've been pretty lucky with it. But on, but hey, it's uploading and I can see myself on other, where can I see, restream. Yeah, everything's working. Everything is okay. Here we go. Everything's downloading, which is great. And checking out the stream. Yeah, okay, perfect. All right, so now we have uh, Drupal, so we have Drupal in this D8BS, which is exactly what I want. And now, if we have a look in here, we have a copy of Drupal. Nothing fancy at this point, okay? This is just a downloaded version of Drupal. Now what we need to do is set up Lando. So I'm going to just copy, paste some of my commands. Now, the good thing about Lando is that what I can do, let me just pop this in. Now, I'm not a Lando expert, so look, at the, so look at the documentation, but essentially, once I've downloaded Drupal with, with Composer, all I need to do is run this Lando command, Lando init, and then uh, you will be prompted, but, but you can also just add in things yourself. Um, so here, I'm just setting up the source, I'm giving it the recipe of Drupal 8, um, the name is D8, uh, BS build and then the web root is web because there is a folder web and then he says full. Don't really know what that means. Anyway, let's hit that. So this will just set the init. Perfect. All right. So here we have a question. What are the best and seamless ways of deployment to production? Well, that we can cover in one of these videos. I I wouldn't mind pushing this up to Pantheon. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's a conversation for once this website that we're going to build is built. Okay, so now what I'll do is let me just quickly load up my trusty editor because it needs time to index. Uh, let me just set this up so that we have PHP Storm. And what I'll show you, just so you can get a good understanding of how everything works. Uh, where is it? No, that's not it. Come on, come on. There we go. All right, so I use PHP Storm as my tool of choice and I forgot to change the font size. What do I normally change the font size? 24? Yeah, I think 24 is a good size. So everyone can see. 
Can you see that? I think everyone can see that. Uh, let me just check my, I actually have a standard size that I upload at, and that is not it, content DB, 24, yep, 24. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so let's just jump, just jumping back into my notes. All right, cool. All right, so we have a few questions here. Um, is paragraphs better than layout, layout builder? They are two different things, even though everyone likes to keep them the same, but in my opinion, they are two separate things. Paragraphs, and I've been meaning to write a blog post about this. Uh, paragraphs, paragraphs, yes, can be used for what layout builder does, but um, layout builder just allows you to build layouts. Paragraphs allows you to group fields together. So if you have a comp complex data model that needs to be attached to the node. So for example, if you if you create a car content type and you want to have different different engine types or different engine specs, that type of data has to be attached to the car. So the car entity. So then you would use paragraphs for that. Think of paragraphs use use paragraphs to group fields. Okay, that's probably my best explanation. Layout builder is used to control the layout. Now, yes, in the past, before Layout Builder, Paragraphs was used for absolutely everything, nested galleries and crap like that, but it gets very difficult to maintain. Trust me, very difficult to maintain. So Paragraphs now is great for grouping fields, but we're still at this funny point where Layout Builder, the UI for Layout Builder is still a little, a little flaky. I still prefer the... I still prefer the um, the the workflow, the layout, the actual. Um, wait, where's my OBS? Just give me one sec. Oh, there we go. Yeah, I still prefer the the UI for paragraphs, but that's kind of the very basic question uh, answer to your question. I will. I do plan to to actually do a proper video to explain the difference, but that's for another time. Okay, so here is Lando. So when you do Lando in it. It just generates this .lando file and I've got Drupal core in here. So now what we need to do is let's go back to terminal and just type in, let me go clear so you can set it up the top. We can type in lando start and hopefully everything just works because the images, Docker images have already been downloaded. Anyway, let's see how taxing my computer gets. Okay, there's a question here. Will you be showing us how to use Git with Drupal in this series? Um, I, I guess I can. Yeah. I mean, using Git with Drupal is the same as using Git with anything else. Actually, no, that's a great idea. Um, I could, I could actually upload the code base for this onto GitHub. That's a brilliant idea. Let's do that now. Okay. So to answer your question about using Git, um, yeah. So what you first want to do is grab this examples dot git dot ignore and then just remove example and what you want to do is you want to ignore these files okay make sure you ignore all of these files um, these things especially vendor as well and there's also I believe a node packages what is it the node one so what I'll do is I'll leave that one in there and I'll also create a dot what is it git ignore up the front and i'll put in vendor vendor as well because i don't want that to be stored okay a few more questions how do you um panels display suite ci cd with git lab runner um oh, you're asking a lot of questions here mate um, so we are going to be using display suite in this example, panels. No, we're not going to be using panels, uh, using CD, CD, CI at this point, you're gonna to have to Google that. Sorry. Again, this is more of a site building. I, I, we, we could later on look at doing this with, um, Pantheon. Why not? I'll try. I, I can figure it out where you push into GitLabs and then GitLabs, um, pushes it directly into Pantheon. There are, there's, doc, there's documentation about that. All right, so now I've gone ahead. Let me, um, wait, has, 
this started up. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Um, let me just, oh, actually, let me go ahead and install Drupal. And why isn't this working? All right, just give me one second. A web root. All right, we need to change this. So one top tip, make sure this web root is correct or else. Where is this? Let me bring this up. Or this happens, okay? Uh, would be, uh, yeah, so this happens, which isn't the greatest. Okay. So as a comment here, would be great to have a Q&A session. Well, that's maybe something I can organize. Um, DS, bad practice. Are you saying display suite, Brad, bad practices? No, I'm not sure. Okay, need to now fix that up. Uh, why is that not working? Now, the reason why that's not working is because this web root didn't change, but that web root changed as well. Oh, okay, whatever. All right, let's do um, Lando. Uh, what is it? Rebuild. So is the is Display Suite bad practices or you think Display Suite is bad practice? At, at the end of the day, see, I'm not going to get very... I don't have this ideology about what's perfect and what isn't. At the end of the day, your job is to build a website. And Display Suite, I've used it on many websites. It does the job, honestly. Like, yes, and you will see if you keep watching, I'm going to be doing things through, all through the UI for one bootstrap component. But hey, it does the job and it works perfectly fine. And the most important thing is when you think about, when you want to get into the whole ideological discussion about the best way of doing things, one thing about Drupal is that you want to try and do things so that when another Drupal developer picks it up, they don't have to spend time searching for things. And Display Suite, in my opinion, is a common standard for a lot of Drupal devs. So if it works, it works. All right, let's test this out. Dun, dun. Oh wait, what's the port number? What's 800 now? <gasps> Is it going to work? Dun, dun, dun. Hey, there we go. All right, so let's just go ahead and install it. Don't know how long it will take. Oh, my CPU is getting taxed. All right, let's go through this. And then we can quickly set up GitHub. Oh no, sorry, no, Git. So with Lando, you want to pop in. Why's my CPU going up, going nuts? Anyway, uh, with Lando, you uh, this is pretty much the credentials, username, password, database. They're all here. So it's just D8, D8, D8. The host is database. So what you want to do is type in Drupal 8, Drupal 8, Drupal 8, but then you want to change the host to database and then click on save and continue. And now let's just leave this to do whatever it has to do. And I do hope it's quick. It was quick when I wasn't live streaming. <laughs> oh, anyway. All right. So let's go here. Let's set up. Uh, what is it? Git. Uh, in it, done. Uh, let's um, put in, what is it? Uh, da, 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 da. All right, yeah, it's not going too slow. All right, so now let's just go ahead and add everything. I just wanna make sure it doesn't add t uh, too many things. All right, so just give it one section. Yes, I understand you can use Docker on Windows, but I'm not on a Windows machine. It's gonna be a bit annoying if I get that question every single time. Yes, I know I can use Docker on anything else, and I did bring it up that it is slow on Windows, but that's the situation I'm in right now. Okay, so now we're running Git which is great. Everything's in there. You can see yeah, it's all in there, which is perfect. Let's have a quick look. And let me just make sure. 
it is all in there. Unless uh, unless you want to get me a um, Windows laptop, that'd be great. But yeah, I don't want to run multiple machines. All right, I think this is all ready to go. Did that get added? No, that's not. That's ignored, which is great. So, perfect. Okay, cool. That is all ignored. So now what I can do is um, first, uh, yeah, uh, get, yep. First commit, done. Okay, now we are there. All right, so we've got that set up. And now what we are going to do is have a look and make sure everything is nicely committed. And then have a look at what we are going to build. All right, wait a minute. It shouldn't have committed. We should have ignored Drupal core. Anyway, whatever. Deal with that later. And this is still going. All right, so. All right, so let's have a quick look at what we are going to build. So the way we're going to break it out is, well, today I want to get this, these components sorted out. Okay, so these card components, bootstrap, uh, what is it? Four card components. So if I come here, uh, let me go to the latest docs and then go components. And then if I go to card. So we're gonna be building this type of component right here. And we're going to use, uh, we're going to use a bootstrap theme called bootstrap four, because that one works best with layout builder. That's the most compatible as far as I'm aware with layout builder. And yeah, we're just going to go ahead and build that stuff. This is nearly finished. Trust me, um, Docker is much faster, but I'm just that I'm, I'm live streaming everything and, um, Chrome is also using up a lot of CPU as well because uh, I've got all the videos running. And so, and then the, so let's have a look at the Bootstrap 4 theme Drupal. This one in my experience is the best one when it comes to um, integration with Layout Builder. I've tried Barrio, I've tried Bootstrap, I've tried Radix, and there's probably some obscure bootstrap based theme that doesn't have the word bootstrap in it so i don't know about it because i always get comments saying oh oh i'm surprised you haven't tried out this theme that's got a very obscure name like radix because i didn't know radix was actually bootstrap until just recently um and it's got like 10 installs like of course i'm not going to know that stuff uh so yeah we're going to be using bootstrap 4 as i mentioned it's got the best integration with layout builder okay so we're finally coming to the end. This is going to be our Drupal site that we are going to be setting up, which is going to be fun. And then now what we need to do is just wait for the, okay, sweet, here we go. So the thing is, uh, let's call it Drupal Bootstrap. Oh, I'm going to just give it a fake example email address. And let's just leave that as it is, turn that off. And let me put this to my time zone and click on save and continue. Okay. So we have a working site for now. And so here is our working site. Hopefully it's not gonna be running too slow once it's up and running. Perfect, okay, good. All right, it's quick enough for me. Okay, so here is our working website. So the first thing we need to do is I need to make sure because this always locks it down. Yes, it does. So let me just unlock these folders and then we need to download a few modules. So just give me one second. Well, actually, let me just set everything up so I can finally... So I need to do a few more things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to utilize the local settings. Okay, because that allows us to use this development services, which then allows us to turn on Twig debugging. 
And so let's go ahead and do that. Chuck in development service. Uh, sorry, this example dot local. Leave that set up the way it is. What I'll do also is go down in settings.php, scroll all the way down. Da, da, da. Remove that and I will switch this config so that it syncs into our file system. And I'll also put in config slash sync so that I can do drush config export and whoomp. I was gonna whistle, but I didn't want to annoy people. <laughs> um, it just downloads. Uh, what else, what else, what else? I think that is it for now. Um, I'll keep, I'll, 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 I won't turn off these backend stuff because everything will go dog slow. Let me now type in Drush. Oh wait, let me have a look and see. Lando, uh, actually I'm curious to see. Lando Drush, because there is Drush integration, but I want to know, is it Drush nine or eight or 10? I don't know, let's, we will eventually see. Okay, let's just, just do a Drush CR and make sure that's all working because now what's gonna happen is here, you're gonna see settings.local get, get picked up. That gets chucked in. Uh, then, then this settings gets used. So automatically error level is verbose. So it's nice and, and it tells us the error level so we don't get a white screen of death or just those stupid messages saying error occurred. Uh, not that useful. And then we also turn off um, CSS and JavaScript aggregation. You can do a whole bunch of other things, but one thing I do like is also it switches this stuff. Um, skip permission hardening because I think that's what um, sets the default to read only, which is very annoying. All right, cool. So cache cleared. And so now first boot up, we'll take a second or two because it's clearing all right done now let's get to work all right now again this is kind of like a meant to be a very community orientated build so if you do have any questions please uh yes all my live streams will be available just come back to the channel um yeah, uh, yeah, all live streams will be available. Uh, well, let me just, um, uh, yes. So yeah, there will be a blog post as well following this. But no, the live stream will be available straight away and then uh, give me a day or two for the live, uh, for the actual show notes. Because even I don't follow videos um, and often when you're following along, you want to grab snippets of code, they'll be in the blog post. Cheers. Uh, yeah, well, it's not work for me. It's, what is it, nearly 10 to nine at night. Anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and download. So we've got a few things to download. First thing we need to do is download. So let me just close this. All right, clear. So I'm gonna type in composer, require, if I can spell it, require Drupal slash, the space suite, Drupal slash, Field group, and I'll show you why later. Drupal slash bootstrap four is the theme. I'm just trying to think, is there anything else? Layout builder, bootstrap. No, that's it. All right. So this is gonna go ahead and download. I was actually thinking that while, while Composer is downloading, I can play like Quake 3, because I found out that, and, and this actually shows you my age. Because you know, all you know, streamers play games, of course. Um, I did, I did find a web version of Quake 3. And it's and it looks brilliant. Like it looks as good as the, the day when I when I when I begged my mother to give me money to buy 64 megs of RAM. 64 meg, okay, of RAM. I mean this machine that I have now has 32 gig of RAM. But I, I, I remember begging my mother to get 64 megs of RAM in a Pentium 233. Pentium 2233. Yeah. Showing my age. Was it that? I don't know, don't remember. Anyway, so let's just wait for this. So this is just downloading field group. Now field group is pretty cool, okay? It allows you to field groups and I'll show you when you use it. And um, all right, so it's just gone it's nicely downloaded. All right. 
So now what we need to do is let's jump to extend. And what we're gonna do is simply install. Um, so we need to install display suite, layout builder, media library, because we're gonna be using media library, because that, use media library. Oh, shit, what else? Oh, sh shoot, sorry. Um, field group. And let's just leave it at that for now. It will tell me if I need to install anything else. I think that's it. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Because what I'm planning to do, so my thought process, so let's have a quick look at this. All right, so let me increase it so you can see it. Um, let me move this. All right, cool. This will be a block type. So we're gonna create a block type called card, okay? And the card will have image, image field, title field, body, well, body comes with it. And let's just leave it at that. We can put link in, no, we'll leave it at that. And then I'm thinking to create this grid here, we can use a layout for that. And we can use a display suite layout because display suite now has integration with layout builder. And I'll show you what I mean, mean about that because I didn't know about this and this is freaking awesome, okay? Um, display suite allows you to add classes to regions and you can and you can define layouts and all that. And before, I don't know when this was put in, but but normally you'd normally you'd use display suite in the manage display page and you just do everything through that. But now you can use it in layout builder, which is awesome. And, and, and it really does change a lot of things. So let's go back here. Everything's been installed. Layout builder, display suite, blah, blah, blah. Okay, sweet. Okay, so we've got that installed. And now what we need to do is we need to install our theme. So let's go ahead and install this bootstrap, but, but we're gonna create a sub theme because it's always good to create a sub theme. And I feel like we're gonna be modifying a whole bunch of stuff. So I, I think in this set of videos, it's all about just setting everything up and we, will, and we should be able to get some site building done straight away. And what I want to do, yes, is go and come here, set this up. So if I come here, themes, uh, custom. And what I'll do is type in um, web wash bootstrap four, dub dub bootstrap four. And this will go ahead. And an error happened. Dun, dun, dun. What the hell happened there? Themes, custom. I swear this worked when I, when I tested it out. Okay, why isn't... Uh, I'm not sure why it's not displaying errors, which is a bit annoying, because it should be. And let's turn on, um, where is it? Error handling. I thought that was meant to be on. Anyway, let's do that again. Now, worst case scenario, we can just copy things ourselves. It's not a problem. Okay, so it comes in. Let me just make sure this path is correct. Custom, yes, yes, yes. Bootstrap. Bootstrap. Okay. Symphony file system class not found. Yeah, I've got no idea why that's not working. Okay, let's go back here and Okay. Uh, let's just go to performance. I don't know, maybe Oh, that is very interesting. It looks as if none of my changes have happened. All right, let's have a quick here. Lando SSH. Let's have a quick look, shall we? 
um, site. Oh, it's all there. All right. All right, let's do something radical. Lando stop and Lando start. And let's see if this does the job. All right, so it's coming through, which is correct. And what I'll do, because this stuff should automatically be getting picked up unless I didn't, the settings not local. Oh, skip hardening still working there. Okay. All right, let's just give this a go. Now this is all booted up again, and it's not. Oh, what is it? It always switches. Port eighty eighty. Okay, port eighty eighty. And let's just jump back on. Okay. All right, this better work. See, the one time I'm like, all right, cool. Let's do a proper proper setup using Docker. And it's already crapping itself. And I tested the creation of that file system earlier on. So I'm not sure what's caching. Maybe there's opcode cache, maybe permissions. No, it's not permissions. You can't find it. Can't find it. So it's complaining. I have a feeling Maybe that drush command isn't in isn't connected directly or isn't working for some reason. So let's just give this a second to work. Perfect. All right. Now come along here. Of course it's not working. 80, 80. All right. Okay. I think we're there now. Oh, maybe that could have been it. The drush command. Anyway, let's give this a go and see what happens. All right, go to appearance, settings, and then come all the way down here. Bootstrap 4, bootstrap, moment of truth. No, nah, still crapping itself. Do a bit of debugging, let's have a look. Okay, so let me just bring this in. No, you can't actually find this component. That's interesting. Why can't I find it? I thought it's part of Drupal. Where's that? Symphony? All system. And Drupal uses it. Composer update. All right. All righty, all righty. Now this is weird. Let me just double check that symphony. File system, file system. It is not there. That is funny that it is, it is not there. Let me check my other files just to see i followed the exact the exact setup now oh, come on don't die on me where is it let me just get back and have a quick look at the other setup and um no that's not it come back here bs vendor and symphony and symphony file system is not there. Okay, so it's in here. Why the hell is it in here? All right, let's have a quick look here. File system, core file system, that's not there. Okay. So what, 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 what was it called, file system? 
All right, do a quick search. So that is, for some reason it is not calling up. Okay. All right, now what I wanna do, if this is broken on this, then chances are this is gonna be broken. So let me just quickly check and see if, if file uploads work, we can, we can work around it, it's not a problem. Okay, image. Come along here, all right, cool. All right, let me just upload a file. Where is my, all right, I'm gonna upload one image here. And let's just see if this actually works. If it doesn't, we're stuffed, oh, getting there. All right, cool, um, card one. And then let's just hit save. All right, that worked, all right. Bugger it, doing it a different way. And I'll figure it out later. All right, cool, so to, copy it, all we need to do is let's copy this across and paste that in there and I'll call this one dub dub bootstrap, no, what is it? Bootstrap four. And no, don't add that to the, um, what is it? The repo, I will sort that out myself. And what I will do to save a bit of time, I did make a copy of this, so I'll just, grab this from another project. So that is, let me just, actually, let me just close this off. I'll do it quicker and easier. I'll just copy it from this project. Because I know it's working. Okay. So this is now gonna copy, oh, it's gonna copy node packages as well. Great, anyway. So what it's gonna do, and I'll show you, and then I can run, I'll be able to run um, npm install because we need to compile SAS. All right, so we have that there. And then now you can see the node has been added. Oh, what I need to do is also add that to the git ignore. So, no, what is it? Just node, is it just node modules? And let's just give composer, oh sorry, no, um, PHP storm a second to figure everything out. You gotta love PHP storm, it's great, but then it has to just go in and index things at the wrong time. Like now. <laughs> uh, what is it? Node modules. There we go. Hopefully that's gonna ignore it. I believe that's it. That's all that's required to ignore. Uh, let me just have a quick look. I always forget how to ignore. Yep. Ah, oh, there we go. Yep, node modules. So from a that standpoint, pop that off. Cool. Okay. All right. So now we've done that what we need to do is I've gone ahead and added all this in, uh, this is all, all working. So I went ahead and, oh, let me just remove this. I went ahead and set up Laravel Mix. Um, and in the, in the show notes, I'll point to a link because I've written about this before on how to set this up. But essentially all we're doing here is we are, uh, grabbing this style from the bootstrap four and then we're simply compiling it and that's it okay but this allows us now the benefit of using this bootstrap four theme is that you only really need to use it if you are going to be overriding templates i have a feeling we will be overriding templates we will need to do that so that's one thing to be aware of i do have a feeling we will be overriding templates um so now with all of that set up uh, let me see if this actually works and this actually compiles. So I've got this set up. Go to web themes custom. There we go. Done that. So then it's npm run dev. So it's going to go ahead. It's going to run. Let's see if this actually compiles. And then, yep. All right, sweet. 
All right, so that worked. So now if we go to appearance, and then uh, click on, uh, let me go to, here we go. I'll click on this bootstrap four, which is my one. And then all we need to do is make sure the blocks are set up correctly. All right, uh, npm run dev, all that does. If you go in your node packages, it just runs this script. So anything that's under scripts and dev, you have to you have to type in n npm run and then dev or, or npm run and prod. And that's it. So that's just part of the setup of using Laravel Mix. Okay, so I do know that if we have a look at our site now, it's going to look kind of broken. So we still need to configure a few more things. Okay, kind of broken. So the first thing I, I need to do is just save this page. I know that because then it saves the configuration and then it should fix it nicely, nice. Um, actually, let's just use this page for now. So everything is centered, beautiful, beautiful. And then if we go back to appearance and I'll turn off logos. Yep, don't want logos, it gets in the way. And uh, what is it? I'll set it, I'll set it to this because I know this was set up in the last one just to give us a bit of uh, differentiation between things. All right. So now we need to set this stuff up, these blocks. You can see here these blocks are just in a weird state. And so now if we go to, let me actually do this. Oh, actually, that's a terrible example. Let's just wait and set it up. Structure, block layout. And then if I set branding there, navigation there. Let's just remove form and I will also remove. Well, actually, I think I'll need that one in there. And I think now it's going to look a bit better. Why is bloody logo still there? All right, let's get rid of logo. I really don't want logo there because it gets in the way. But I do want the site name. Ah, here we go. There we go. So now let me open this up in a separate tab. Well, oh, that's not it. All right, and if I resize, okay, it's all working, sweet. All right, so now we have a basic Drupal site. Eh, kind of. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Anyway, I need to look at and see why this Lando didn't download the file system package. Ah, oh, Composer, 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 Composer. Anyway, I'll have to look into that and figure it out. Anyway, so... Now, we need to start building things out. So the first thing we're going to do is build out this component. So this is a card component. If we have a look here, uh, where is it? And here, okay. Oh, let me pop that out like that. So this card component is pretty straightforward. Yeah, pretty, kind of. You have a card card image, uh, sorry, yeah, card image, sorry, body, card body class. So we need to now generate Drupal's markup like this. Now, the tricky part about Drupal is that there's always 10 ways to do things in Drupal. Of course, you know, that's, that's, I'm sure, I'm sure all of you can agree to that. Like, you know, that's the annoying thing about Drupal. And you sometimes, you know, work with developers that are very specific. Oh, you know, it has to be done this way. Has to be, has to be, has to be done this way. Um, I'm just going to show you one way how to do it. And again, hey, you do it that way. Don't do it that way. But I think the good, I believe the best way to learn something is to often see how other people build things. And that's where I learned a lot about Drupal 
when I saw other people do things, then I was like, oh, awesome. I didn't know you could do that. Especially when I, when I just started programming PHP. I had no idea what PHP could do. I didn't understand programming. You know, I don't have a formal, you know, computer science background. And so with this component, we're going to try and do as much as we can in, in the back end. And then with other components, like a slideshow, we're going to have to write a bit of custom code. But with Drupal projects, I tend to avoid writing as much custom code and, and I try to use, and I try and I try and use off the shelf parts, you know, and what I mean by off the shelf parts, um, I just mean um, modules, that's it. I am not against writing custom code. Well, kind of, I am sometimes. Um, uh, well, you know, Drupal 8 code can be very verbose and sometimes you spend so much time just figuring out which which class to, no, which which service to pass in via a dependency injection and the right markup and all that. I do enjoy writing React code, I have lately. Anyway, but that's different. Uh, I've got nothing against PHP. I'm not one of those people that complain about PHP. I was laughed at, I remember one time for telling people that Drupal's built in PHP. But, you know, PHP has stood the test of time and this was 12 years ago and it's still around. Anyway, enough ranting. So let's go ahead and build this. So the first thing we're going to do is because we are using Layout Builder and we're not using paragraphs, because we're using Layout Builder, we're going to create a block type. Now, Layout Builder allows you to create and modify layouts. And then every component that goes into the layout or a section in the layout is a block. Now in Drupal, a block often is something that you control through structure, layout, and you modify it through here, okay? But now the concept of block can be anything, you know, a block can be a field on a content type, can be exposed as a block. Now, technically in code, it is a, it is a block because I'm sure that, I'm sure there's a block plugin which creates a derivative of a block and so on and so forth, but that's getting low level, don't have to worry about that. But just understand that a block is a, piece of is something that goes into a region and it's not just blocks that you control from the layout on this page and you add to a region okay you it all makes sense once you see it in action all right so first thing we're going to do is go to structure block layout and custom block create a block type create new block type we'll call this card call it whatever you want but I'll call a card. Um, defines, uh, what is it? Bootstrap card component. I will probably spell things wrong, so apologies. And then go to manage fields. And you can see that there's a body field already. It's awesome, that's exactly what we want. So the only thing we need to do is add in a media field, okay? Now, for people who don't know, media field is part of the media module. Use the media field from now on. Never just attach an image field directly to it unless you have a specific reason. And the reason for that is because the media field allows you to attach different media types. And that's kind of like my rule now. An image, an, an image field and file field should only be used on the media types unless you have a very specific reason to use them. The only reason why I, could, I, I, I can think of is if you, want, if you only want to allow people to upload that image and that's it. Okay, I don't know. So I'll call this one image because you can only support an image. All right, save field settings, perfect. And then we'll go ahead and add that in. Okay, so all I've done is I've configured that. Next thing we need to do is put in a title. Uh, so if you do have any questions, please um, ask. I will be going through this as quickly as possible because this is kind of just a raw off the cuff chat. All right, could a reason be having users that should have minus options? I'm not, sorry, Morton, I don't quite understand your question. Are you talking about Drupal has too many options? Anyway, I'll put this in. Let's make this title mandatory. And I think that is it. Let's just leave it for that. Let's just leave it like that. Um, block description. Do we need a block description? I think we do. Okay, let's move title there, body. Actually. Let's change, let's get rid of the body field because it's body with summary, I don't want that. And I will get rid of this one. And let's call this one. Um, da, 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 
I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Let's let's try let's try not be smart with it. Hmm. Actually, let, let's just make it a description. Ah, uh, yes. All right, sorry, there's a question. Um, I mean, if I have registered users on nodes, where they... Yeah, so with, so with the media, you can reuse... Um, so yeah, the good thing about media is that you can reuse the assets across the whole site. And that's the that's a good thing about it. Uh, whereas an image field, as soon as you attach an image, oh crap, I put in the wrong field. Sorry about that. Yeah, so with a with an image field, as soon as you, as, if you use an image field and you attach an image to that image field, you cannot reuse it because it's essentially attached to that image field, and that's it. Media field allows you to reuse things, but there is an extra step. All right, so let's go to um, text. Uh, text formatted long, call this one description. Did I spell that right? Yes, I did. And then, uh, let's just leave that as it is. That's looking all right. Reorder things. Okay, perfect. Now, we've got that set up. Now what we need to do is we need to go to structure. And then we need to switch on layout builder. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create, we're going to kind of create things at the same time, like give and take, give and take. So we've configured one thing, jump to another thing, then configure another thing, and then jump to another thing. That's, just, that's how you really do it in Drupal because you kind of need to set up the foundation of things. All right, so we go, let's go to custom uh, content types, manage form, dis uh, manage, manage display, sorry. And let's switch on. First of all, the full content view mode. This is what I do. I always use the full content view mode. And the full content view mode is used only on the node slash ID part. And but the problem with using and I and bit of a bit of a rant right now. Now I try and avoid using the default view mode, especially on content types content types, because the, the default view mode is the fallback view mode for any of these uh view modes, and, I'm, and I do apologize for saying view mode too many times. Um, oh, let me increase this so you can see it. The default view mode is used as a fallback for these. So, so if Drupal comes along, so a perfect example of this, okay, you see this search index. The search index view mode is used when Drupal wants to index your content. So if you use the standard Drupal search module, Drupal will go ahead, load up all of your entities using the search index view mode, grab all the fields and render them, and then and then index all of the markup that is coming out of that view mode. Now, if search index is disabled like, like this, Drupal will then jump over to the default view mode and grab that and then render everything using the default view mode. And sometimes you can have issues where if you remove particular fields that you don't want to be displayed, but you still want them to appear in the index and so on and so forth, you might have issues. So my rule of thumb is if you're dealing with the full content view mode, uh, always use just full full content and just, and just leave default as a fallback and just leave it um, as it is. Now, a few versions ago of Drupal, you couldn't actually select allow each item to have its own layout customized unless you're on full content, unless this has changed. So I'm not quite sure. So just use full content. That's all I'm saying. Listen to Ivan and use full content. There you go. Life will be so much better. So if you haven't looked, so if you haven't played around with layout builder before, you'll see that on the manage display page, we have these fields here. Now with layout builder, we have a very different UI. Boom, look at this. Yes. Amazing, isn't it? Um, so it looks very different as you as you're fully aware. Um, so it looks very, very, very different. And what you can do is you can go here and modify things as much as you want. But I'm going to do something crazy. And we're just going to not modify it from here because I want this layout to be very basic. So here, okay, we don't have anything in, in here because we are going to use layout builder as kind of a page builder. And this is what I was hoping Layer Builder would eventually become. Even though it can be used to modify 
layouts, it can also be used as a page builder. And the reason why we can do that is if we go here, we have selected this option, okay? Allow each content item to have its own, um, its layout customized. And yes, for Morton, yes, layout builder is part of Drupal core. And it is a module. You just search for layout builder and search for it and you're done. Yeah, it is part of core. Um, so because we have checked this, that means we can create a custom, we can just create a basic page and then modify the layout just for that particular entity, okay? But once you've started customizing, so just imagine you have 50 pages and you've customized the layout across all 50 pages, then if you come here to the manage display page and modify anything here, this change won't propagate to all those 50 other pages. So just be aware of that. Um, once you customize the layout on individual content, treat it as content, okay? Treat it as content. So that's just something to be aware of. So now if I go to content, add content, basic page, let's search for, I just put in, ah, no, we'll call it homepage. We'll put in some effort, okay? We have nothing here, all right? Oh, got some spam on Twitch. As a Twitch comment. Whoa, becoming famous by followers. Oh, God. There's spam absolutely everywhere these days. Huh, funny. Anyway, okay. So we have this here. Empty page. There's nothing in there. But if we click on layout, now we can modify things, okay? So I can go ahead and add in a section. Okay? So I can say, all right, I want a one column. Oh, I don't know. Let's call this body oh i'm terrible at naming things to be honest oh, it's called a body whatever and then i can add a block into that section and then you can add things to it okay so you can add in so if you have a body field on this on this content type you can add it you can add in any of the custom fields and these are blocks and that's why it's a bit confusing at first like what the hell is a block um we can see that this is all coming through okay now now, if we, so let's go and let's actually close this off. So what, so what we need to do is, I wonder if I can, actually, let me go ahead. All right, let's do this. Um, let's just call this main. We're going to be re rebuilding this a few times. And then add block, add custom block. You can see up the top here, I can't see it. You can now select your different block types. I can type in, now I can add in these blocks. So let me put in uh, card one. Now this is just the card, the title. This is a bit confusing because this is the block title that's shown in the administration. This title will be shown to the end user. So I'll just call this one block one as well. And then we can upload a, an image or we can select an existing one using layout builder. Now you can see the UI for this is not perfect, but it does the job. It, it, it's better than most most themes. And then we can put in, you know, card one description. Okay, so I've added this in and let's go ahead and click on save. Now, one thing to be aware of. This is something that, you, that you're going to get, well, you might figure out or might get asked. Because when we created this block, can we reuse this block? All right, so I'll give you 30 seconds to put in your answer. No, I'm just joking. Um, no, you cannot reuse this block if it's been added to this particular layout because this block is considered an inline block. It cannot be reused. So now if we go to structure, block layout, custom block, you won't see it here. But I could come, come here and create a card block and then select and do whatever I want with it. But these inline blocks cannot be reused. So that's just something to be aware of. So when, you're, when, when you are creating these pages, just stop and think. It's like, okay, do I want it to be reusable or don't I want it to be reusable? Now, chances are there is, a, there is probably a module that can sort this out for you. I haven't looked for it, but hey, look for it. Okay. So we've done this. And then now if we... All right, so we've done all of this. I'm just trying to think, 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 think. Um, all right, 
So now what we need to do is we need to turn this into a card. So we need to generate this markup like so. All right, let me just jump back in here and let's just have a quick Mm, uh, quick look. Maybe if I type in Lando, I'm still, I'm still thinking why the hell this isn't working. Give me one second. I think I know why it's not working. Just give me one second here. Because I'm not sure if this drush is connected properly. Ah, oh, so why the... Hmm. All right. What I need to do, let me just go ahead and... Uh, Uh, just give me one second. So I think I need to download. I think I need, I think I need to download Drush locally. That's what I think is happening. So I am just making a few changes here. Because now if I type in... Uh, where am I? Composer, require, dru Drupal. Drupal and uh, Drupal's like me muscle memory. All right, so let's go ahead and see. I would like to see maybe. Ooh. Maybe that file system is only available with Drush. I wouldn't be surprised if it is there. I would not be surprised if it is there. All right, let's just give this a second. So I'm just downloading Drush locally. And I'm just, I just want to make sure it's all working. Come on, work, 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 work. Give it a second. So has it downloaded Composer? So it's come through. Let's do come along and all right. So let's just leave that. So now what we need to do is I want to turn on tweak debugging because I want to, we need to change this markup to match Ah, where is it? Give me one second. Oh, here we go. So installing. Here we go. Why is it now installing it from there? File system. Here we go. Here is file system. So I think there's maybe a bug in that theme where it just assumes file system will be available, but maybe file system is a is only used shouldn't be used in production. Huh. Anyway, that's good to know for the future. So now if I type in Drush CR, that's not working. Why is that? Oh yeah, I need to be logged in. Do of course. Um, so Lando Drush info. So this should return the site. Oh no, was it status? Is info or status? I don't know. All right, so we've got that. Drupal. All right. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to turn on Twig debugging. And so what is Twig debugging? Well, if you have a look at this markup, you'll see. Amazing markup. Drupal generates the most beautiful of markup that you've ever seen. And... The annoying thing about all this markup is that you don't know where it's coming from or which layout is getting used, which template is getting used. Speaking about markup, I remember using panels in Drupal 7 and you'll be like so many, I mean, literally like about that much of like div, 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 div. Mind you, panels in Drupal 7 was very powerful. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not complaining about it. I know, I know people either love, love or hate panels. And it's funny. It's like one of, one of my like rudest comments on one of my rudest comments on YouTube is about panels. Like there was, there is one person out there that was so angry that I that I did a video about panels in Drupal eight that he had to, he had to you know vent. <laughs> Honestly, it was it was freaking hilarious. It's like seriously, man, panels. Mind you, this was before you know the current situation that we're in. So I guess priorities were very different back then. <sighs> but panels in Drupal seven. The most powerful. Ah, I knew it. This is different. Lando 
probably installs a Drush 8 instead of now I'm using Drush 9. Okay. Now I've learned. Okay, now I wish I could start this live, this live stream again. Oh. Anyway, top tip, install Drush locally if you want to use it with Lando. Anyway, back to where we were. How's, how's my live stream going? Yeah, everything's still recording. All right, cool. Still live. No drop frames. All right, sweet. I hope there's people still watching. I haven't scared anything off. Chuck something into the comments if people are still watching. It's saying 16 people, but I'm not sure if that's correct. Anyway, I love, talk I love talking to myself. Anyway, so now what I want to do is turn on Twig Debugging. And so if we search for, so the best way to do that is to just Google Twig Debug Drupal 8. And then go to the first results. Wait, am I even on this one? Oh, yeah, there I am. That's that that that's what I had here. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, somebody just hit AF. Yeah, ACDF. Well, for me, it's technically. Um, for me, it is this because I type in Dvorak. <laughs> so it's A O E, A O E. What is it? A O E U because I I don't actually type in QWERTY I type, type I type I type in Dvorak. That's a that's a secret that I like to keep. So when people jump on my machine when it's even unlocked they start typing in and they're like what the hell is this? If you don't know what Dvorak is it's a it's a different keyboard layout and it's done in software. So all my keyboards are still QWERTY, but I just I've just been using it for like the last fifteen years so I just know straight away. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is turn on Twig debugging. So to, to do that what you need to do is grab this parameters. Grab this twig config and then go into your uh, sites and then make sure you've switched on this settings.local. Very important because if we go to development.services.yaml, we pop it in here. Okay. And then now, again, uh, Drush CR, oh, sorry, Lando Drush CR. Now, the reason why I have to type in Lando is because I am on the host machine. So Lando, if you type in Lando, then Drush CR, it actually goes into the host, uh, sorry, into the container and then does CR. And then now, if I refresh, hope everything works. <laughs> We should see comments that tell us where the template is getting loaded from. Oh, sweet. Here we go. So you can see here a whole bunch of comments that get injected in. And yeah, so so um, Fire, yeah, Firefox does some, some funny things with the comments and it comes up as red and this and that. And um, But if you do it in uh, Chrome, I'm seeing if I've got Chrome. Of course I've got Chrome open, but I've got too much stuff running in it. Um, uh, view source. Let me see if this actually works. Copy view source this way. Gonna work. Ah, sweet. Here we go. Yeah. So you can see that Chrome it shows it a bit a bit better. Hmm? A bit better. And also, also with Chrome, if you inspect it, it, it also shows you the order in the comments. It actually shows you the line breaks. But in uh, Firefox, it doesn't. But if you just Double click on it, it'll show you the line breaks. I like to use Firefox now as my, my dev tool um, because yeah, Firefox is pr pretty good. And also I use the Firefox, what is it? Um, developer edition. All right, enough talking, Ivan. Let's get to work. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to modify this markup, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we are going to use Display Suite to handle majority of it, pretty much 99.9% .9 of it. And uh, so, so let's go back to, actually, let me go here. Um, close this, close this. Okay. Let's go to structure, layout, custom block, and then block types. And then let's go manage display on the card row. Now, block types are fieldable entities. So they will get a managed fields, managed, dis managed form display, and managed display. Same as any other type of content type because it is a fieldable entity. You also have 
um, media types of fieldable entities as well. So they will have manage form display, manage, manage, manage display, and also manage, um, yeah, manage display, manage form display. Now, when it comes to view modes for like blocks, I just leave it as the default. I really don't turn on any of the rest of them. Now, you can actually use Layout Builder. Okay, you can use Layout Builder to modify any type of entity. So, yeah, it's up to you if you want to do it. All right, so now what we're going to do is use Layout. So, I think... How did I do this last time? I'm just trying to think. Let's use a column. And then the space suite allows us to add, wait, where is it? Wrappers, classes. The space suite allows us to add classes into these particular regions. So what I'll do is I'll go here and I'll add in this arbitrary class, which is card, which is, which is required. Card, card. Okay, so now we'll come back here. All right, so now we can select card. So let's go ahead and do that. And then if we have a look, maybe I need to save the page again. Oh no, okay, we can see. You can see this kind of an outline come, coming out. Uh, you can just see it. You probably can't see it, but I know if I go here, scroll all the way up. Oh, where the hell is that? Come on. I need to find the proper div. Here we go. Let me zoom in a bit more so you can really see. It has added this card class here. Now, of course, Drupal has added in all this extra stuff, but most importantly, it's added this card class. All right, so we've done that. Now what we need to do is we need to clean up this markup. So let's remove these. And let's deal with title and description. Because if we have a look, the title and description need to be wrapped with a card body div. Okay? Now, how do you do this without writing any custom code? Well, you could use a module called field group, which allows you to group fields, hence the name field group. So, if we go to here, you can see field group here, and then select HTML element, and we'll call this card body, and click on save and continue, and then we'll add in this extra CSS class, and we'll call it just card body. And then, simply place the title and description below it, and then click on save. And now, title and description will be wrapped with a div element with the class card body. Let me just double check that. Is that correct? Yes, it is. All right, good. Okay, so we've got that working. Now, if we go and refresh, all right, we have this card body. All right, we're getting there, getting there. But we still have all of this markup, like, yeah, all this ton of markup here and then we also have this markup here as well now i think we can get away without putting in this class because if i inspect oh wait no not that one if i inspect this one you can see that there is card text but it's not nothing's getting actually picked up so i'm not sure what it's getting used but if you have a look here card title you can see that yes there is a margin bottom. So we're going to ignore um, this putting up, putting this class on because the reason for that is that the P tag that comes out of that field is controlled by the editor. So there's so there's really no easy way for us to just slap on a slap on a class in the first in the first paragraph around it. So we'll just leave it oh maybe I've got a feeling if there's multiple ones duplicate node. Oh, no, there isn't. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure. Anyway, let's just leave it for now. We don't we don't need it. But what we do need to do is we need to wrap the title tag, sorry, the title field with an H5 and the 
card and the sorry, sorry, the class called title. So let's do that. Now, what we need to do is jump into another screen. All right, so there, there is a comment here saying there are modules. There's a module that adds classes to fields. Yeah, there's there's multiple modules, but I but I'm going to do it with with Display Suite. So if we go into another screen, let's just go into Structure, Display Suite, and then go to oh Settings. I always forget, and then check Enable Field Templates. So this allows you to control the field templates, or well, switch and modify the template at the field level. So now, if we refresh, you'll see this new option, field template. And then if I go here, I can go absolutely crazy and do a full reset. So it only shows the value, but I'm going to choose expert. And this, <laughs> this allows you to change the markup and put attributes on, on the actual field item. The field items so there's another div that wraps the field items and then there's an outer wrapper that wraps the, the field items and field item crazy yes let me put in an h5 and then what is it card title oh, what is it card title uh have a look yeah card title now now this is powerful but the tricky part is if you have to conditionally, if you have to con conditionally add or remove classes. That's one thing to be aware of. So yes, this is great if the markup stays the same and you don't have to change it. But if you have to conditionally say add in card title two, depending on a bit of custom code, then you're up, you know, SHIT Creek. That's one thing I've discovered with this when I had to actually do that for a job. It's a very messy form, altar, for changing arrays. So it's kind of like Drupal's great when you go, when for one particular use case, when you want to modify the content, but as soon as you want to add in a bit of extra logic and a bit of extra this and a bit extra that, then you need to um, either write custom code or, or go in a whole other different direction. So let's just change that title that is done. So now if I refresh, I should see, there we go. So now what's happened, you can see straight away below card body, we have now the card title. And the easiest way to sort this one out, we don't want this div around it. Well, actually it doesn't really matter, but we'll try and keep the markup as simple as possible. Let's just remove, let's just do reset, full reset. And then, this will show us a full reset and it will just show us the P tag, which was added in by the actual um, text editor. Okay, so we're slowly getting there. Now, we need to put these in and we need to, we, we need to display three at a time. That's one thing I want to achieve today. I think that's going to be it for today. Just displaying three at a time. Okay, so the best thing we can do for this, okay? So uh, let me just put in, well, okay, let's go layout. Let me, let me have a look at my notes. I did play around with this. So put in that in. Okay. So if we go here, what I think we'll need to do So I'm just trying to think the best way of doing this because there is a funny bug, of course, there's always a bug uh, with Layout Builder. So here we can drag and drop, which is fine. But I know if I add in a bootstrap, um, a bootstrap layout, for some reason the drag and drop functionality does not work. See, it just does not work. And then if I, wait, what if I was to, to move this? Yeah, yeah, it's a funny, it's a funny issue. For some reason, the bootstrap um, layouts, you can't drag and drop, but the other layouts you can. 
Anyway, we can work with that. It's a it's a workaround that we need to sort out, but we can we can work with that. We can work with that because it's going to save us from writing custom code. See, it's one of these things. Yeah, gather around, people. Now, now it's now now it's time for old man ranting about Drupal. Because well, this isn't a bad thing. I'm just saying, like sometimes you need to pick your battles with Drupal. You can do something very quick and easy, but it may require require an extra step or two. Or if you want to do it the proper way and save yourself two steps, you have to spend probably half a day or two a day to achieve it and write a crap ton of custom code. So that's the choice you need to make when you use Drupal. It's the, you know, that's 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 the choice you, you need to make. Now, at first I was thinking to implement this, this design, where is it? Uh, if we have a look at the markup, let's have a look at the markup. Anyway, let me have a sip of the water, but I'll just quickly show you. I'm trying to move my water away because it makes a creaking noise. Okay. So if you have a look here, you can see that there's a row and then you have a column. And then in that you've got the actual, uh, you've got the actual card. Now we can do that. Okay, that's that's not a problem. But what we but what but the the other thing we can do is we can use these card layouts. And what we can do is we can use where is a card group? No, not card group. We can use the card deck. So to use these layouts, you can see you have a card group, you have a card, well, it's a card group. What is it? Card groups, card deck, and also card column. And to do that, all you need to do is just wrap the cards with a div with a particular class and that's it. So that's easy for us because with Display Suite, we can create arbitrary classes and then add them to regions. Simple, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it the hacky way. And then over the next, other live streams will do things in different ways. What I want to do is grab card deck. So where is that? Okay. Come no, let's go here. No, classes, sorry. And then I'm gonna come in here in boot uh sorry in um display suite and call this one card or maybe we've got it already here, card deck, and call this one card deck, not desk deck. Okay, so now what we need to do is if we, I'm trying to think, all right, come here. One column layout, and then we add the custom class. Class for layout should be card deck. So add that in. Still looks a little funny. All right, we can deal with that. But then the annoying thing is, is that we can't move stuff into it, okay? I have no idea why. Don't ask me why. <laughs> no idea. I don't have really any ideas. Um, but if we click on move, and then you select the region you want it to go into, you can simply say, then move. All right? Okay? So, yeah. Cool, cool. Now what I want to do is let me go ahead and quickly save this. It's still not going to be fixed, okay? Just, just a heads up. All right, it's still going to look, look a little funny. So now let's go back here and click on place block. Oh, my leg's itchy. Uh, and then go to custom block. Let me remove that. Card block. And I mean, let me just create another card block two. Card block. Let me add a media. Oh, no, not that way. Um... Where's my folder of test images? There we go. Card two. Or card two. Card two. And then I'll put in card two. <laughs> card two description. Uh, sound like Richie Benno. Um, da -da 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 -da. This is looking nice. Okay. All right. Don't worry about the way it's looking. We'll, we'll fix that up. 
And let's put in card three, card three, card three. Add card. Again, we can select an existing card. And this is why I wanted to use media library. Use it, use it, okay? Use it. Um, chuck that in. Yes, the UI is not that good. Now, one thing I will mention as well is that a lot of the themes out there, in my experience, especially the bootstrap themes, uh, at this point, don't integrate that well with this system tray, this side thing that appears out from the side. So, at, so in my experience, it's only been Bootstrap 4, this Bootstrap 4 theme that worked well with Layout Builder. The rest of them have kind of work. So hopefully over time that will get fixed up. So I'm just putting card 3. Description. Uh, that's looking good. Chuck that in and we are done. All right, hit save, save layout and let's look at all of this. Okay, 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 okay. Let's have a quick, uh, let me, uh, sorry, I need to zoom out because sometimes these comments get really in the way. Uh, all right, so you can see here that we have this so we have card deck, awesome. But then we have this block, is this div with this class of block layout, inline block card, blah, 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 div, which is wrapping it, which is, I think, causing a problem because if we, we remove, move this one up and then let's just move this one. So oh, I'm just moving divs around to see, oh crap, did that work? No, it didn't. Move that one up as well. And then if we move this one up, and then let me just remove um, uh, node, delete that one, delete this one, and delete this one. Okay. You can see that, oh man, that looks crap. Uh, just give me one second. What is the um, oh, responsive? Let me bring this up. Because the images aren't responsive in uh, in Bootstrap, so responsive images. Oh, that's it. Is it IMG? Is this still here? No, fluid. Image fluid. Is that it? Oh yeah. All right. Oh, okay. So that just adds that. Okay. Cool. All right. So now, if we do a quick fix, so there's a few things we need to do here. So where's this class? Boink. Uh-huh, done. And done, okay. Hey, look at that. It's starting to look like card deck. And then if you resize it, woohoo, woohoo, brilliant, look at that, awesome. Now, of course, we've done a lot of things in, in, the, um, in here, and then if, of course, if I go refresh, it's all just gonna go to crap. Anyway, okay, so there's two things we need to do. First of all, we need to get rid of. Oh, come on. Inspect. We need to get rid of this. Where is it? Where are you? Where are you? No, not that one. Here we go. We need to get rid of this div. Now, luckily for us, we have Twig. Twig debug installed. So we can see where this where where this actually comes from. So this is coming from classy, classy templates, block, and then slash block. Okay, let's have a look, shall we? Uh -huh, classy theme. All right, let's go there. And then templates, what was it? Block, tweak. I believe this is it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do something that normally I will tell, tell you not to do, but let's just test it and make sure. Now I probably need to refresh. Oh no, I need to clear the cache. All right, so what I've done is I've essentially just removed it and to not spend time, I'm just gonna go in there, rip things out, see if it fixes it up. If it does the job, then we can override the template. And happy days. All right, come back here, refresh. And then, that still didn't work. 
Why did that work, eh? Hey? Classy block. No, all right, let's have a quick look at this. So, I chuck this in. Let's just chuck this in. I'm here. Let's just refresh this again. Sometimes what happens with Docker is that the file syncing between between the host and the container sometimes stops. And let's just refresh. All right, come on, Lando, don't fail me. If this is the case, I'm going to have to switch back to local site, the old-fashioned way. All right, let's just have a quick look. So where's this web? Um, what was it? Core themes. Or maybe I'm just doing it in the wrong place. Who knows? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> All right, let's have a quick look. Yeah. Yeah, see, it's not changing. All right. Because if I now type it away, let's just do this. All right. Well, let's just grab it and override it. I know that's it. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to switch over for the next live stream to a local version. Simple. Uh, so we've got that. But with the inline suggestions, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this. So that that's the template. So then I go here. Where is it? So where's my stuff? Blocks. Create a folder in here called templates block. And then new file, twig. And then if I go back to here, grab this, but I will simply remove this stuff. And then I'll type in, let's have a quick look at this to see if this is actually copping across. All right, that's there. And now if I go web, themes, custom, bootstrap, and then templates. The templates is there, why is it? Unless I was modifying it in the wrong place. No way, all right. I'm really annoyed why this is why this did not work. Okay, let me just copy this again. So copy yeah from root path. Alright, let's do this again. Let's just double check this. Alright. Uh, yep. No, okay. Let me just go in there. And then if I open this up. And then cat block. Vim block. It's not there. Vi. None of it. That's not there. None of it's there. All right. So it's weird. I've got no idea why it doesn't modify this. Maybe it's something opcode cache or something. Anyway, whatever. It's it's in our one, which is great. So Lando. Drush, oh, I can't even spell that. Lando, because it's getting pretty late here. I just really want to get this last design, well, last part done. Ooh. 
and I'll be better prepared. Well, actually, uh, should I be prepared for the next live stream? Ah, who knows? <laughs> All right, so now if we refresh, it should. Oh, there we go. So now if we have a look here and look at, wait, where's, wait a minute, what, what, what's this image? Oh, yes, image we need to fix up as well. We need to fix up image. So let's scroll all the way up. So block content card. Now, if we go up, you'll see here, nothing is loaded up, but you'll see that the block inline block dash dash card is. So that means now that this template would only be used on the inline block and the card and the block type has to be card. So it will only be used for that. So that's a bit of a win. Uh, we don't have to worry about it causing problems with other other with uh, with other setups. Okay, so we've got that sorted out. Now we need to sort out the image because if you have a look at the image, it produces. Wait, how long have we been going for? An hour and forty minutes. My God. Anyway, if we have a look at image, you'll see that we have the image tag here, but then we have a file item. Then we have a file items div. Then we have a article where the actual enter an, an article element. So we have like three or four levels because the media field is, oh, what is it? The media field is an entity reference field, which then references the actual image. And so blah, 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 goes down. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go to structure. I have to, I have to stop touching my face. Anyway, uh, structure image and I will create a new view mode. Well, I need to, well, I need to go to manage view modes uh, here and we'll call it bear, not as in the animal, as in bear empty. Yeah, I, I suck at naming things. Honestly, <laughs> I struggle with that in, in Drupal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna switch on the bear view mode we're going to go to it and then let's just hide that and let's change uh, here we go layout uh, the field template to reset and so this now should be very bare hence <laughs> no pun intended bare now if we come here we need to refresh this page and then we can come along here and select the view mode. So because this is an entity reference field, we can select which view mode we are going to load up, load up the referenced entity. And then click on save. And then go in there, hit refresh. And this should be a little better. So it should literally be image. And then we should see, ah, oh, well, First need to probably just save the page. And then now if we come in here, why the hell is that not working? Oh, yes, I need to change this one. So then, <laughs> so then on this image field, we need to change this one to reset. So, so just imagine this, okay? Okay, so just imagine this, how many levels you have. You have the image field, which has a wrapping uh, items wrapper, then an item wrapper. Then it's loading up an entity, which has an entity wrapper, like the article wrapper around it. Then the image field has a field items wrapping div, and then it's got a field item, okay? Singular, not plural, wrapping div. Then you finally have the image. And we just want the image. Hmm. Now there is another module which I've used in the past. And it's, I think it's maintained by a friend of mine. Uh, no, what is it? DS Drupal, DS Chains. Yeah. It's maintained by Lee Rollins. Been, has it been used? I used it on a project and it was awesome. It allowed you 
to essentially grab fields from referenced content. So instead of doing all of that, what I could do is I could have just got the image field from, from here, I could have got the image field from the image media type through this entity reference field. Uh, it, it's a shame only this many people use it, but yeah, it, it is an awesome, awesome module. Awesome module. All right. So I think that is it. So last but not least, let's just hit save. Click on that. Refresh. What do we have? Oh, come on. Sometimes this stuff gets a bit funny. All right. Inspect element. Let's go to image and we should just see, oh my God, it's still there. So image here. So something, so bear, oh, we need to reset this one. I think this is going to do it. Oh, okay. I have to feel. Sorry about these people. Sorry about this. Ah. Uh, dun, dun, dun. And see, you can see why people take a long time to build Drupal sites. <laughs> now. Image. And we should see card right up the top. Yes. Okay, so we have image. So card. Image card body and then now let me just remove this we'll have to flush the cache yeah I'll do all right now I'll sh now I'll show you the markup give it a second another second now we come along here and finally, what do we have? Let's reload everything. And then if we look at the markup, we can see, oh, don't worry about that one. We need it for these little contextual things. And then we have card, image, body, and then card title. Awesome. It's getting there. It's getting there. And we haven't written any custom code oh well no sorry we have we have well uh, no my fault we've overridden the template all right so now what i want to do is put in this um, um image fluid on the images so to do that i whew, whoa, 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 whoa. trying to think where does now, I can be lazy. Well, it's not lazy. I can just do it through CSS, right? You know what? Let's just do it through CSS. So let's go to here. Overrides. No, let's keep everything as it is. Custom. Let's create a folder. What is it? Card. Uh, Card.scss. And uh, card IMG float. I don't, I'm just putting something stupid in for now, just so I can see that it's working. So don't worry, it's not gonna. I'm just doing something. I'm just doing stupid things. Yeah. So what is the um? Oh, isn't there ah card? The card, yep. All right. All right. So now, if I run in um, npm run run watch, let's just do that. Give that a second. Hopefully, it's going to pick up. And then, so now every single time we refresh or make a change. All right. Cool. All right. Sweet. It's picking up. All right. Done. 
So now let's go back to our card. What is it? Extend dot IMG fluid. Is it is that the right markup? I don't know, it's gonna it's gonna complain if it's wrong. Oh, no, it's not. Hey, I'm front end, man. I'm 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 totally front end. There we go. I've gone from Drupal, just Drupal dev to fully I'm a full I'm a fully stack. Fully stack front. I'm I'm no, what is it? Fully stack now. I'm full stack. There we go. Full stack. Uh, a few of my friends will be proud. I can write CSS. SAS. I'm full stack now. Okay, so now you can see here. Uh, so all I've really done is instead of trying to screw, and this is, and now gather around for another storytelling about Drupal, especially when you're trying to integrate it with systems like this. Now, yes, I could have spent the time to figure out how to add the class to Drupal, but sometimes you end up writing so much code yeah, that's it, Darren. Fully, fully stack, bro. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's just not worth writing code to figure out which pre pre processor to use to add the particular class. And if it's for basic stuff like this, if you can easily target something, use use SAS, use the power of SAS, and just simply extend and add it to it, and you're done. Problem solved. Life goes on. And there we go. So now, if we open this up in, I'll open it up in another browser let me just move the mic a little bit closer because i'm leaning back all right so now if we uh, let, me, let me just bring that down and resize there we go so now you can see everything is nicely resized of course when it gets to mobile you can see you have that bit of white there on the right and that is because the width is greater than the actual size of the image. Uh, whereas here, the width is smaller than the size of the image. So we can do things like, uh, we can tweak the image view mode or something, but this is working pretty well. And the good thing about this is that it was pretty easy to configure and set up. Not to a certain extent. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, all right. So we did a lot here. Now I need to remember and document it all, my God. <laughs> Oh. Uh, so we did a lot here and let's just have a quick look and see what we're going to be building next not right now because I, I, I need to go to sleep um, so let's close this alright so I think these are just cards right yeah see they are just cards as well uh, one thing I didn't do is I didn't put this image top oh let's let's fix that up now sorry remember we're full stack man we're full stack what we need to do stand image was it omg top card top let me see if this actually works oh it did work so now this now now image top you will just see a nice little like radius up the top Hey, there we go. There we go. I fixed it up. Image top. Image card. Yep, it just puts little radiuses. That's all what image top does. Hey, there we go. Front end. Front end tech. You know, awesome. We're full stack again. We are absolutely full stack. Uh, okay. So I think that is it for now. Uh, I'm just trying to see what else we're going to be doing next. I think maybe... Um, uh, I know people want this freaking slideshow. If 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 you want to tell me what you want me to build next in the chat, just hit something like, do we want to build this slideshow? Do we want to build these these pages or this type of like portfolio using views and then uh, using like related pay, getting the re related projects using views? Um, you can do that. But what is the most sexiest thing to do? You know, slideshows. Pe people love slideshows. I mean, in my 15 years of, build of building websites, nothing has changed. You show a client a slideshow, they go absolutely crazy for it. You show images that go just beside each other, boom, boom, they love it. Or a massive hero image. They go crazy for that stuff. Who cares about how awesome your tests were? <laughs> uh, what else? We can build this. I need to come up with a solution for this. It may not go full width, but I'll build a solution for it. So let's have a look at the carousel. Why not? 
Car I can't even spell carousel, carousel. There we go. All right, let's have a look, shall we? Uh, this is going to be interesting. Anyway, we'll look at this next week. Now I need to put everything together. And so, yeah, these... The, okay, so I think that's it for this evening. Thank you, well, if people have actually watched. I hope this has been useful. This is... This isn't one of my normal webinars where it's all planned and it's all perfectly scripted and timed and all that. It's just, yeah, you just build things. Because I haven't actually, because I've realized this, me being a, like a Drupal dev, for the last few years, I haven't actually built a Drupal project from scratch. I've always like come on kind of halfway or, you know, come in towards the end of a project and finish like features and all that. I to actually just build something from start to finish. Uh, that's going to be fun. Anyway, so I think that is it. For us, I think everything's fine. I'm looking at my Docker and all that. Everything's, well, Docker's running a bit better today. Oh, it's just as quick. Oh, no, it's, not, it's a bit slow. Anyway, I'll see if I'll stick with Docker. Maybe with Lando, I'm, I might change over to something else. Anyway, just a quick plug, like I might as well. So if you want to learn more, head over to webwash.net. Um, I've got a whole bunch of tutorials here i will post this up as a tutorial I've got a whole bunch of courses as well and um yeah check them out most of them are free all of them are free essentially oh, except the master class that's not free but yeah anyway that's it for me and i'll catch you all next time take care okay now it's time to stop the streaming stop recording and stop the stream. All right, thanks a lot, Darren.